At this point, we've learned a whole lot about waves. We've learned what waves are. We've learned different kinds of waves. We've learned wave anatomy, different parts of a wave. We've learned how to do some basic calculations about waves, such as how fast they're going, frequency and period, and how to figure out the wavelength. So we've really learned a lot about waves. Uh, now it's time, let's talk about wave interactions. So what we want to talk about is how do waves, uh, what happens when waves hit each other? We want to talk about how do waves combine when they get together? And what happens when waves hit a boundary? To talk about what happens when waves hit each other, let's consider a situation like this. I have these two waves, and one of them, the one on the left is moving towards the right, and the one on the right is moving towards the left. So the question is, when they hit in the middle, what will happen? Will they bounce off each other, go through each other, change each other? What do you think? Well, let's let them hit and see what happens. What we noticed is that now the wave that was on the right is on the left. The wave that was on the left is on the right. And we can see that what actually happened was they passed right through each other. And they didn't even affect each other at all. So we can see that when waves mix, they do not affect each other. They go right through one another. Now another important thing that we can see from this activity is that when the two waves came together, we can also see what happens when they're right at the same place at the same time. And you can see that this height, so this particular wave, and this particular wave, they added up to make one big wave right at the middle. So it looks like when two waves come together at the same place at the same time, they add up together to make one really big wave. And this addition is called the principle of superposition. So what we've seen in a, is an example of the principle of superposition, which says at the point where two or more individual waves meet, the displacement of the medium is the sum of the displacements of the individual waves. So you can see right here, this is the displacement of the medium, and it is the sum of these two waves added together. And we've also seen that the individual waves are not changed at all by passing through each other. When two waves are at the same place at the same time, they exhibit a phenomenon called interference, which we're going to see in this animation. Now what this is made of is, first of all, there's this wave at the top, and that wave is going to be stationary. Then what you're going to be seeing is this second wave moving from left to right, and it's going to mix with the first wave. And then down here, we're going to see the result of mixing those two waves together. So let's watch this and see what happens. Now notice sometimes the waves line up and they make a bigger wave, and then there's other times where the waves are out of phase and they cancel out. Let's look at this animation a little more carefully to explore interference. First of all, the principle of superposition says if this is wave A and this is wave B and they're going to be in the same place at the same time, then all you do is add them. So A plus B will equal, we're going to make this wave C. So this wave down here is the sum of these two waves as they mix together. So as I run this, basically this wave in the bottom is the sum of the two waves at the top at all times. 
Now let's pause this a little more and let's go to right here. Now notice at this point when I have crests lined up with crest here they add A plus B to make an even bigger crest here. I have two troughs, there's one here and one here, and they have an even bigger trough right here. And then I can see also I have the intermediate point or the zero point on the two waves, so they add up to zero. So I call this situation when the two waves add up to make a much bigger wave, I call this constructive interference. Now as I let the wave move on a little bit farther, I can see when the crest from one wave lines up with the trough of the other, I get zero. And notice on the bottom wave, that trough is lined up with this crest, and that's zero. So here I can see the wave is canceling, these two waves are canceling each other out. So I call that destructive interference. And as the waves move through, we have constructive interference, a much bigger wave than either wave. And then we have destructive interference, which is smaller wave than either wave. So I can see that interference can kind of go either way. So let's summarize. The effect of two or more waves that are traveling through the same medium is called interference. There's two types of interference. First of all, you have constructive interference, and that occurs when the two waves combine produce a wave of even greater amplitude than either of the individual waves. And you can also have destructive interference, and that occurs when two waves combine to produce a wave of smaller amplitude than either wave. Well, if you remember at the beginning, we asked three questions. What happens when waves hit each other? How do waves combine? And finally, what happens when waves hit a boundary? We've done the first two. We learned that when waves hit each other, they just pass right through each other without affecting each other. How waves combine is when I have two waves in the same place at the same time, I see something called interference happening, where waves combine according to the principle of superposition so that the waves add or subtract to each other. And now we're going to talk about what happens when waves hit a boundary. So if you look here, you're going to see that there is a wave coming on screen on the left here. And the wave's going to travel along a string that's connected to a wall. And we're going to see what happens when the wave gets to the wall. So here we go. Now if you notice what's happening is a crest approaches the wall and when it reflects, a trough is reflected backwards. So the crest approaches the wall, hits the wall, and a trough comes out. So what we would say is when this wave reflects from a fixed boundary, we would say that there is a phase change of 180 degrees. The crest turns into a trough. When a wave is reflected from a more dense medium, such as a fixed wall, it undergoes a phase change of 180 degrees, meaning a crest will turn into a trough, or a trough will turn into a crest. Let's see what happens now when there is a reflection from an end of the string that is now not fixed anymore, but is free to move up and down when the wave gets there. So let's see what happens with this reflection. Notice now when a crest comes in, on reflection, a crest comes out, so that there is no phase change. If a trough was coming in, then a trough would be coming out. So when a wave is reflected from a less dense medium, there is no phase change.